everybody and happy new year so i am going to do my whip parade um this uh, i am going to show everything before 2000 before 2019 started i can't spoil it is the 2nd of january for me now i didn't get to film as fast as i wanted so uh, but there is only one whip i have worked on for one day and that whip i will just show the photo of where i last was on that project because that is where i ended the project in 2018 at the end so a little announcement um going forward i will not be showing haul in my floss tube videos and i'm not sure if i'm going to show rack or not we'll we'll see how how it goes and it's not because i don't like it or have anything against other people doing it it's just me um having done 2018 finding floss tube deciding to stitch each and every day i did stitch from stash i had a huge amount of finishes so my budget was over the rooftop it just made me spend a whole lot of money and I know some other people have told me the same things there are other floss tubers that have gone out and said I have a problem with my spending when it comes to stitching so I I will not be showing haul um, and one of the main reasons is because I am doing floss tube sometimes since everybody else have like this huge amount of haul they show each and every week or month I really feel like I also had to spend money on things I wanted just to have sh something to show and I can't do that I can't use that much money so instead I'm just cutting out the whole whole section of my um, floss tube videos and now I don't feel like I need to buy something to show you <laughs> instead we can look at my amazing whips and that is what we are going to do now soon um, my plan for this is this year I am just going to show my whips and at the end of this year if I get the time or the beginning of next year I will show my progress where <clears throat> where I ended up on each and every whip that I did in this whip parade plus I want to show the new whips that I added to my whip pile if I add anything it I'm doing no starts 2019 so might not be <laughs> it might be since I have have stitch started like over <clears throat> 70 whips yep 70 not 17, 70 whips. Yeah. I think I actually passed 80 whips, half stitch started. And <clears throat> I think like over 30 of them is just full coverage. Because I was in a really big frenzy just starting full coverage. So my plan was originally at the end show everything I have half stitch started that is not going to happen nope that will take too long I have this huge uh, bag with just my whips and I have 
if you can believe it, even fuller. Um, this thing, uh, with just half stitch started whips, because the one I'm using for my whips, they have like flosses and stuff and things and frames in the project bags. The half stitch started project is just the fabric lined up. It's insane. And because my half stitch project started taking over my stitchy life, <laughs> I had this wedge tote where I just had a few uh, of my smaller whips started, like my dragon coaster project. Uh, this is where I have my Bitsy Bob. Uh, it's a bigger project, but it's so compressed in that little Bitsy Bob. And now it is humongous with a lot of half stitch started projects because I was afraid to run out of smaller projects to do. So <sighs> I am going to show you my whips in. chronological order from when I started them. So I'm going to do oldest to newest. I have my book that I have, uh, I write down just each and every whip. And as I have finished them, you can see I'm just uh, lining them out. And that is because uh, this one I am only doing uh, my whips and once in a while when there is a lot of things I have removed I will just uh, find some new uh, pages and start over fresh and I have this whole book dedicated to just that that is the only thing this book is just so I have an easy access to see my whips in the order when they got started. So first off, it's my oldest whip. It was started back in 2014. And I know it was around maybe February or March because I had just finished another project for my nephew when he got born. And I know I started this right after. It is my Lady and the Tiger. Uh, it's a kit by Luca S. And I think they're Russian. But I could, could buy them from uh, a Scandinavian online store for cross-stitching. And the name of this in Norwegian is called Forventning. And that's tra translated anticipation. Um, but I just call it my lady and the tiger because it doesn't really have a name as I can see. Uh, and I know the Scandinavian sites have just put names on their cross stitch kits that's not always the correct one. So my lady and the tiger. This is the one I have worked on, so I will insert a picture here. It's where she was the 31st of December 2018, or in reality, I think that is where she was the 9th of December 2019. <laughs> Uh, I didn't haven't stitched on her since uh, last time in December. Uh, she is stitched on 18 count Ada, two over one, full process. And my goal for her is to get at least three page finished on her. I don't know if 
how much I can get done because in reality I want all pages done. But I have seven left, three of them are partial pages. But even though those three partial pages is partial, they're bigger than I have in an earth design page. Because this uh, project has some huge um, pa pages in the pattern. So one page is approximately one full heaven and earth design plus one third of a heaven and earth design page. So when I do three pages on my lady and the tiger in a heaven and earth design that will be four pages. So you see it, it adds up quickly. Um, so I have to see. In a way I want to finish her but I also have some other bigger, um, not bigger, I have some other full coverage project that I also want to either get started on or finished um, or do more on uh, and in a way I want to do at least one page on each and every active full coverage I have and that takes away from the pages I could have done on my lady and the tiger um, because I have seven pages left on my lady and the tiger and that will equal about nine pages in heaven and earth design if not more because in heaven and earth design you get some partial pages that are really nice partial pages and these ones are just bigger so we'll see but that's my lady and the tiger she will be a focus and uh, what I have done now is, I can show you, you get a sneak peek. Um, here I am with her right now. You can see I have started doing this background. That is uh, on the edge right here. And the background, there is a lot of background and it's just big blocks of color. There is like two different colors here, but they're separated. They're not like often with heaven and earth designs, you would get every other stitch is that color. This is not it. This is like um, about to here is one color and then the rest is one color. And this color will go down like a small line uh, with the tiger's face and then suddenly go out and be the next big color going all over. Um, so I'm basically working, my plan is to work some on the big blocks of color and then do the more confetti heavy areas here with the tiger because there is some confetti-ish going on. So. You did see where she's at. A sneak peek. So, next up is my big baby blanket. Uh, this was started uh, when I found out that I was pregnant with my son. Um, and my plan was to stitch on it and finish it while I was pregnant. Uh, my pregnancy was a rough one, so. I couldn't do it um, so I'm not 100% sure where I'm at in reality almost everything I started before floss tube I don't know where I was at when I started it or anything I didn't keep track but I know approximately it is started in 2015 and I'm guessing I did start it at the end of March 2015 because that is when I found out in the beginning of March I found out I was pregnant I had to order the baby blanket 
kit online. Uh, so it took some days to arrive before I could start it. And soon after I had started it, I got some really bad morning sickness that lasted the whole day. So I know it had to be before April, but not in the beginning of March. So somewhere between there. It's going to look like this in the end. Uh, the design is by Joan Elliott. Um, and the, it is a kit by Tobin Baby. Also ordered online from the Scandinavian website. And... Oh no, I have my needle here. Ooh, that's not good. I need to remember to remove that later. And here's where I'm at. <laughs> as huge as you can see, it's a pre-printed fabric. And I have almost finished the bunny and the carrot. And I have started on the border. So, if I would guess, I would say I'm like 3% done with this. A lot to do. And I am hoping um, to later this year get some more progress in on it and hopefully finish all of the moon uh, i'm not including the hat or anything either the moon or this bunny and some of the border would be nice to get done but we'll see it's not in my january plan so Next up is my Epic Pokemon Generation 1. This one I actually know when it started, even before before PlusTube, because I had just started doing Instagram, <laughs> so I had the dates there. So this was started the 23rd of October 2016. This is how it is going to look like in the end. And here is where I'm at now. Wrinkles and everything. You just have to deal with it. So basically where I'm working right now is uh, this page. And then my plan is to do this page, this page, this page, and this page. And with... Last year I got 13 pages in total, that is with two pages from a lady in the tiger or in reality just one because the one page I did finish had like si seven stitches left. So but I'm not sure if I can do it but I hope to get these three rows done in 2019 that will mean i'm over the halfway point um because this these pages are done all the way down but not all the way up so but it is one two three full pages left and four partial pages left so there's still a lot of work going on here and and yeah I'm in a very confetti dense area and it's going to continue to be that way so we'll see uh, how I roll with that through the year uh, next up is my Story Keep Butterflies Galore. It's a heaven and earth design. Sh short, uh, artist is Jasmine Beckett Griffith. This was started the 26th of 
October 2017 and it was um, I had just recently discovered floss tube and everyone was talking about year of whips 2018 so this was started so I could have it started before year of whips 2018 and then later on I decided not to add it to my <laughs> Year of Whips, so um, and here I am on her. I have approximately one and a half page left, and the page is just fifty in the width, so it should go pretty fast. Um, so I hope to finish her in. 2019 that is my goal for her is to get her finished then I have my mini still here this was bought um, shortly after a friend of me ended her own life and this is the chart that uh, made me find floss tube in a way so here is where she's at and not where she's at that's what she's going to look like and here is where I am um, this is stitched on a 25 count easy count Logana by Swigger and I started stitching this diagonal stitches um, the way Blitz Stitch does it. And it stitched 101 full crosses. Uh, my butterflies galore is 28 count Murano uh, stitched. 201 10 stitch. This is the full first full coverage I did 10 stitch and I'm still not sure I'm liking it. <laughs> um, so that's where I'm at with that one. It's far away from a page finish but in reality I don't like working from this end so I might stitch my way over and do page one and my goal is to get page one done on this one uh, next up is my winter queen uh, I have put every paper chart I have uh, I have been able to scan into my iPad using the OneDrive, when I have the pro version of OneDrive that I need when I'm doing cluster because I have so huge videos that need to get uploaded to my computer. Um, I got a really good scanning ability. So I have scanned them in and then I'm using uh, good notes to have my patterns on and be able to mark them because you have to um, I can't use Goodreader because Goodreader need to recognize the symbols and it will not do that with the scanned one but the Goodreader you just highlight as you would with a normal highlighting pen so that's what she is going to look like. Winter Queen. And here I am now. So I, I started in the middle and I worked my way just a little bit up her waist and now then down to the edge and I'm slowly working my way down to the end. 
uh, before I will go up and work her downwards and up. Not not what I'm usually doing, but it's a nice practice to work in another direction than what I usually do. So next up is um, uh, and by the way, my Winter Queen is stitched on a 32 count Belfast opalescent linen. Um, just white from Swigert. Next, and that was Mini Still Hair was started the 7th of November 2017. The one with the angel. My Winter Queen was started the 30th of December 2017. And this one was also started the same day, the 30th of December 2017. And she was started after Winter Queen, so she is after Winter Queen on the list. And here's where I'm with her. And this is the soda stitch pattern. Uh, it's stitched on a mystery linen, but it's a really soft and nice linen. So maybe, I think maybe it can be something like a cashel linen in a light, light pink color. And I'm doing a lot of changes in her, mostly switching colors out for metallic colors. And some places I will put in beads instead of um, cross stitches. And I will insert a picture of what she will look like in the end here. And then we have arrived to 2018. And here is where the most of my whips are. Um, except for Winter Queen. Um, Everything before 2018, I am going to try and work some of. Uh, Winter Queen, I don't know because, as you know, I have a plan to do the Cinderella that I have borrowed from Stacy. Um, and the other ones, I want to either finish or get at least one page finish on those projects. So now we're entering. 2018 and my new year new start was a freebie on heaven and earth design called Maui Princess. Uh, it's artwork by Hannah Lynn or previously her name was Hannah Disney. Um, so that is how she is supposed to look like and I am stitching this in hand on a 28 or 32 count Murano um, and that's what I have done. I have done a little bit over 300 stitches. So. Uh, not much work, I think I worked on her the first and then one more day in all of 2018 so and I I have been considering maybe switching her out for another project and use that fabric for as I said another project but I'm not sure so um, we'll see if I get rekindled some love because I really like the design I just I just have so many designs that I have have in my stash that I have bought that I would rather work on those than the freebies if that makes sense so next up is my Cinderella in rags 
and so here she is in rags and there you have her in riches that is how they are going to look like I am doing them on the same uh, fabric so so I started my Cinderella in rags the 11th of January 2018 and Cinderella in riches I not accidentally started the 25th of July 2018 and it's because I didn't want to have lines on the window and I figured since I'm doing both of them on the same fabric just go with it it has to happen sometimes and here is where I'm at so I have a little bit on the top of her the thing she has on her head like a bandana and some on the window and I did the window to see how the crinic and such would look because I was um, just unsure how it would look on the fabric because I got those later than um, when I hand dyed the fabric myself and yes the fabric is a uh, 32 count Murano hand dyed by me and it's a swagger next up the 10th of January 2018 I started my temperature garden by Stitching Mommy. I will try and insert a picture of approximately how it would look like here. And this is what it looks like now. So I got to me. <laughs> but I have everything else done a fair amount. So my thinking is, before May, I want to do all the back stitching on this one. And as we are entering May and June, um, I will start working on the um, temperatures for 2018, uh, the days, and like see the difference to... 2019 so uh, but I will not be like only working here because that is one of the things I have found with cells that doesn't suit me so if I have a color I will jump to where it's supposed to be and just work it as far down as I can so it's not so much stopping and ending floss So in reality, my temperature garden was on the 10th of January and my Cinderella and rags was starting the 11th. So I showed them in the wrong order. My temperature garden is stitched on a 28 count mystery even weave. It's just a light green color. And as you can see, they are starting to be really close now. Uh, these two and the next two uh, because of the year of whips, trying to get them started before year of whips. So next up was my Alice sleeping on a clock. It is by Cute Patterns by Maria. You can find her on Etsy and it's going to look like this. It was started the 11th of January 2018. Uh, I started this after I started my Cinderella in rags and here's where I'm at. Uh, it's a 14 count Ada that I hand dyed myself. I started in the middle then I counted my way up around here uh, and then to her dress. 
so I can work from the top down. So not much progress uh, and I hope this year to get some good progress in on this one. Um, I have a couple of Alice patterns both started and not started so it would be nice to get going on those. Um, next up is my Be Inspired by St Stitchrovia uh, and I started this on the 12th of January 2018. Uh, it's going to look like this and here's where I'm at. So I just work my way with the black up to the top and was first off thinking just filling in all the black but then I, I wanted some color to see how it looked on this fabric because this is also a 14 count Ada I hand dyed myself. So maybe if I could get like the first half done on this that would be cool. Uh, I don't have goals for for every whip I have. Uh, I mainly have it just for the ones before 2018. So that's just how it is. Then I started um, the Dormouse by Brooks Books um, in the Alice series. There is 12 patterns like this and you can see some of them right here. Um, so this is the Dormouse or Dormy. And I am doing every one of these on a huge piece of fabric because I of course am doing Huge pieces. This is an 18 count Ada that I dyed myself. And that is how far I have gone. Yeah. Small start. Uh, haven't worked much on this after I started it. And that is also one of the reasons I will not do Year of Whips. Because Year of Whips for me ended up being me having to start a whole bunch of stuff just to be able to get enough whips to have 15 whips. And just didn't have time to work on them when I started them. And since they were in such a hurry to start, I kind of lost the love for them when I just did a few stitches to know where I was and then, okay, on to the next one uh, and counting that as a start. So, um, should also maybe focus on getting some of those done. Then, we are into May. Because everything I started between the 9th of February until the 6th of May, I have finished. So, um, the first thing I started in Stitch Mania when I did like do a goal and if I finished the goal I could start something new. So the first one is Esmeralda by Pinky the Pink. She's going to look like this. And here's where she's at now. So I think I have almost half of the oval on this side done. And I started her dress. So, and this year I want to uh, kind of work my way over and start the oval on this side just so I have. Um, just so I can see how wide she is going to be. So that's 
her. I actually loved working on her, so I just didn't take the time to take her out after me because she was a fancy lady and I prioritized stitching on Winter Queen instead of Esmeralda. But I hope to get uh, work done Esmeralda this year and maybe get some good, maybe take one week on her and stitch on. Next up is my story time sampler by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And before I go there, Esmeralda is stitched on a 38 count I can't remember by picture this boss. If I remember to edit it in, I will edit it in. If not, well. Oh well, that's that. Uh, back to Storytime Sampler by Frosted Pumpkin Citry. This was started the 23rd of May 2018. This is how it will look like finished. And here's where I'm at. I got Peter Pan done. Then I, when I was going to start this, I totally ended up stopping because I know I want to convert this section. So I just stopped. So the next time I actually picked this up, I started working on this section just because I know I... This one I want and the first four on the top. I am most likely going to keep so um, when I take this out that is what I will work on going to the top on the banner and stuff and then working my way down most likely doing all um, the parts I know I want to do and then in the end just doing all of the ones I need to convert or something like that uh, this is a uh, 18 count Ada hand dyed by me. Next up is The Possibilities by Eliza Gerwing, I think she's her name is. She's called Walking Melons, the artist. It's a heaven and earth design. Uh, it's also known as The Evolution. This is how it will look like. It is, it was started the 28th of May 2018 on a 28 count, easy count Logana by Swigert, and that is what I did do. So I basically stitched one day on this in May, and then I had one day in December where I just did one row of black and stopped. So that's what I did. And I hope to maybe get one page finish on this one. Um, the reason why I haven't stitched so much on a lot of these full coverage pieces is also because I have not had frames for them because I didn't want to take off the ones I have on my frames because those are my main focus always uh, but now I have gotten a little bit more frames uh, the Omnic frames and I hope they will be easier to take on and off and it's also easier to do that when I know I'm going to stitch on this for seven days, so it's worth taking the time to put it on the frame to later take it off. Because it, if I use one day to get it on the frame, I still have six stitching days on it. So, then I started the 31st of May, uh, a baby sampler by Joan Elliott. Going to look like this. 
should do like this because I'm getting the glare from the window. And here's where I'm at. So I just have the top, top half of the bird, some of the letters and done a lot of the border around. And when I have stitched on it, it is a fairly quick stitch. I love the colors in this. I don't know, it's not tip my typical colors, but I think that's maybe why I love it so much because it's something different. So that's where I'm working on that. And since I this year, I'm going to focus more on instead of categories, like I did last year, I focus more on getting different categories done. I'm going to focus more on working on different designers. So I have a whole lot of Joan Elliott. So both my Cinderella and Rags and Riches and my BB Sampler will um, not be a focus since I have the baby blanket. That is the Joan Elliott piece. Next up is my Dragon Coaster project. Uh, it's a design by Fussy Fox Design on Etsy. Uh, she has a lot of small cute patterns. Uh, this is how it will look like. And here's where I'm at. So I did the pink one and I didn't use the call for a pink ones. I just from the DMs, the fake DMC and the unreal DMC, I'm just calling them. Uh, I just picked out three pink colors, three green colors. And I also have, I have done it in almost all the colors of the rainbow. So I'm going to do a blue down here. So this year I want to finish this dragon uh, start and finish the blue one since it's a series it's not counting as a new start and that way I can finish my Alice Biscornu because I really want to finish this Biscornu so that's where I'm at Oop, that one. up next is my Haunted Mansion Sal. It was started the 13th of July 2018. Picture of how it will look like here. And I'm so in love. Here's where I'm at. This is a 14 count granite Ada, I will say. It's a mystery Ada, so I'm not quite sure, but it looks very much like a granite, like a dark gray. I converted the moon myself to be a blood moon, and I love this pattern, especially now when I have started the three and decide it looks so good. So, yeah, hopefully in my rotation, if I finish my goals for each week, then I am going to um, pull out some cells and work on those, my thinking now is. So, I hope to get this pulled out and worked on some more. I'm not sure if I can finish it by October with every other goal I have, but it would be cool to have it finished. So <sighs> I need to do some cleanup again. The other times I did it more not noticeable. <laughs> so. I will do some cleanup and I will be okay. right back at you. Let's going. So, uh, the 29th of July, 
together with Stitching Mommy, I started my Ink Circle Tapestries. We have used conversions from Victoria Motto Sampler Workshop. Um, I think we have a few differences, but some of them are also the same. And here's where I'm at with that one. And it's a pale yellow 56 count Kingston linen. Um, it's a swagger linen uh, that is dyed by Extrude Design. You can find her on Etsy. I have a lot of projects either kitted off or will kit off um, by her. Then we're at my birthday sale, the 31st of August 2018. I started my Stargazer by Mirabilia. And uh, it's stitched on a uh, it's a fabric that I won by I can't remember right now um, but it's like a galaxy looking fabric and that is what I have done. So it's a 32 count even weave. Um, that is hand dyed by Chromatic Alchemy. And I think the name was Hydrangea or something like that. Uh, then next up was the Disney cell that started that I jumped on. Uh, the first panel we got was Tinkerbell. Uh, she is going to look like this. And I started her the 15th of September 2018 and that is all I got done. So again maybe a little bit over 300 stitches. So this is part of her top of her wing to the side. And Tinkerbell is not my favorite. So I might UFO this and start one of the other, either Belle or Jasmine. Uh, and do for this thing. So. I don't know, we'll see. It's stitched on an 18 count Ada. Next up is um, the Black Pearl by the Primitive Hair. It will look like this. Uh, it, it was Link is my homeboy's had her birthday style. And I'm not doing it in any of the colorful colors because I have just converted it myself to what I had in my stash. So it's going to be some silks for you, some Victoria Amato samplers, shop, and so on. And this is what I have done, the black. <laughs> so it's stitched on a 46 count Bergen linen. Uh, and it's hand dyed by extra design in the colorway cinnamon rolls. And this was a fabric of the month. So, and I think the pattern is going to be something like here. So I'm not going to use all this fabric, but I never cut a serge fabric before I'm done stitching on it. Or at least one of the things I'm stitching on. So that was that one. And then I started my epic storybook princesses. That got restarted. Then I put the fabric in chlorine. <laughs> and yeah. So 
uh, this is what the frame will look like uh, it's not it's just black and white so you can't really see the colors but you get the ID and this is what I have done that teeny tiny top of the castle But in reality, if the fabric would have been better, uh, I would have gotten a lot more done. Uh, because I have used a lot of time on dyeing, re-dyeing, and re-dyeing a third time that fabric. And try to start, and try to start again. Then put it on frames and start it a third time. Uh, and each time I started, I ripped out what I had until I just put the fabric in chlorine. And it actually worked. It made the fabric usable again. Uh, next up is a sal by K Warning. Uh, it's still going on and we have no clue what it will look like. It's called... Hashtag no frogging sal, so that is just what I call it. And that is all I have done. I just worked on it one day. And this is a 32 count easy count uh, Lugana by Swagger. So, just a tiny bit of progress. And what we know so far is it's just a whole big part of a sky so nothing interesting to actually show before we get more information uh, next up is my lion king by disney dreams uh i will julie from kansas city girl in a colorado world was so kind to gift this to me it's going to look like this and so far this is where I'm at and this is stitched on a 28 count easy count for Ghana um, 2 over 2 because I'm using blended and uh, 2 over 1 was for too bulky so I had to do a 2 over 2 but it's fine so one grid line is 25 stitches. So not a huge amount done, but I wanted it done so I can try and focus on it this year because it's going to be for my son. Next up is going to be a spoiler. So if you don't like spoilers, you might want to jump ahead a few minutes uh, because the 6th of December I'm not sure if I said when I started the other ones the no frogging sal was started the 29th of November Lion King was started the 1st of December and this was started the 6th of December it's the raccoon cabin by Country Cottage Needlework and it's the Frosty Forest series. And this is the whip I am doing as the A to C stitch with me that will be posted every Friday as long as I have videos up to go. And as I said, spoilers, if you do not want to see how far I have gotten, jump ahead because um, here is where I'm at so I'm almost done with this three and started on the roof and the whole border is completed so that's that one and next up is Santa Secret, it was started the 7th of December, December 2018. 
It's a dimensions kit by the Gold Collection Petite. It's going to look like this. And all I have done is just this. It's actually quite a few amount of stitches. Uh, and it's the top of Santa's hat. Uh, and all of, almost all of the ones that are coming now don't have much progress on them because I started them in December, so it would be started before No Starts 2019. So, uh, next up is my Magical Night by Teresa Wensler. It's going to look like this. It was started the 16th of December 2018 and you recently saw this one. And here is where I'm at. Uh, this is on a 32 count mystery even weave uh, I bought it from a lady selling me some patterns and she hand dyed it herself but it's a nice um, the northern light look over it so I really like it and I just started on the Pegasus tail Next up is a vet wedding sampler I am doing for my cousin. I hope she doesn't watch and spoil it. Uh, I will insert a picture of how it will look like here. And so far, this is what I have done. I know. It's not much but this will be a focus until finish so each month this will get seven days um, where I will work on it um, and at least five of them I will work on this and if I get tired or need to change I might do some of the small one once in a while just to break it up a little bit because it's a lot of this gray color, just the whole pattern. And that's a pattern by Nikki, Nikki Patterns, the same as the baby sampler, same designer. Uh, it's stitched on a pale rose by x Design and it's a 35 count Bergen linen. I think it's linen yeah looks like a linen next up is my last whip I have I started this right at the end of the year uh, when we were traveling to my brother because I knew I would not get the time to stitch much or be able to have a big project or anything like that so I brought with me Snowy Old Snowman by Mill Hill. And I also started this with the mind I wanted to do the magical stitching and literature group that is doing the Harry Potter uh, sal going on all year, reading all the books and stitching. And this reminds me of Hed Hedwig. Uh, so And that's how far I got on that one. So did get a good amount of progress done, but still a lot to go. And since this is such a small one, it's not that much, but it's fine. So that was all my whips I have really started. I have a bunch of half stitch started whips. And one of them I was going to show you because that is going to be a pro priority a focus 
in 2019 and it's the Cinderella by Mirabilia that Stacy from Atlantica Dream Stitches have been so kind to borrow me and I'm going to do her twice and I'm just showing you the one because it's half a stitch so this is Moss Rose Opal 2nd edition by the Crafty Kitten uh, a 32 count Murano and where there's the half stitch nope the other end when it's just a half stitch it's hard to find out where you are so that's how a half stitch start looks like and the other fabric the gray one has just the same nothing more than this just a half stitch so that was all the whips I have I think I have something like 31 whips uh, it soon will end up being two more I'm not sure if I'm going to count this as one or two but since they're so big I think I'm going to count them as two whips um, so as soon will be at 33 my goal in 2018 was always in my mind to be under 30 whips for most of the year. In the beginning I was, I want to be under 20 whips, but I soon realized that it's not happening. So under 30 whips was my goal. Um, at the end in December I went over, even though I had a lot of finishes at the end there also uh, I still went over but it it's fine because I needed it for the no new start 2019 so my goal in 2019 is also to work my ways so I reduce my whip pile to under 30 whips and um, and then start having like uh have three finishes either page finishes uh, part of a bigger like the raccoon cabin uh, the frosty forest series if i finish one of those i'm going to count it as one mini finish um since it's a separate pattern and And a page finish will also be a finish. So each time I have three finishes, I can, if I will, start one whip that is half stitch started. That is my plan. And I hope by the end of the year to be close to only having 20 whips on the go. I know that is difficult to reach. So my more realistic goal is to have under 20 whips not counting full coverage so every full coverage whip will not count towards the under 20 20 whips uh, and at this point I think maybe I already have that I'm not sure I haven't counted I probably should <laughs> So, uh, and in the end, my thinking is I want to, um, in the long run, like 2020 something, uh, to have under 10 whips uh, in total non-full coverage and have under 10 full coverage uh, on a go uh, just because if I'm going to have less than that I need to finish a bunch of full coverage and that will take some time so maybe in 2030 I can end up having under 10 normal whips and under 5 full coverage whips 
so that is my plans. Um, no start 2019. It's, with the mindset I have right now, I think that will not be a problem at all. I am so motivated to get some of my whips done and worked on. And just now going through this whip parade, I oh, there's so many I love. I want to do <laughs> so yeah just focus on what what I have I, in reality I honestly think that except for the Cinderella that I showed you I don't think I actually needed to do any of the half stitch started that I have done um, because I think I will have enough to stitch all year with just what I have. And with the ones that I'm doing on one big piece of fabric, starting the next one is not counting as a new start. Um, even if I just have done them separately, as long as it's a series, uh, I'm not counting it as a new start. And the same with my Disney style. Uh, my plan is to in the end have make like a big blanket or something um, maybe make a big blanket for a, a bed in the bedroom and uh, so those are not new starts either but if I do start one of those I will UFO Tinkerbell uh, so I just have one at the go at every time because it's too much to focus on three or four different one of those when I already have so many full coverage projects. So, um, for January, I just will go fast through my plans just for January now. It is to uh, stitch on my lady and the tiger and get um, the 2400 stitches I need for by the numbers the hard version if I can call it that I also just in the end put up <laughs> for the daily challenge I was not supposed to do that but I did because I have a uh, I joined the Celtic Sprint and you work on one project until you reach the goal. So it's like a board game where each tile you have to stitch that many stitches before you can go to the next one. And you can do multiple tiles in a day. So I, I just joined um, the quarterly challenge for by the numbers with my lady and the tiger so I will stitch on her each and every day but with me doing the background it's not so bad because I can put in one uh, length of color on that one and get about 100 stitches and it takes me under 20 minutes when it's just one color uh, yesterday I stitched two hours and 46 minutes I think and I got almost 700 stitches in um, and that was with me uh, watching floss tube um, being distracted like a lot distracted so if I focus and stitch that one length I think I can do it pretty quick in a day so that will be nice um, and then I will focus on the wedding sampler I'm going to do. Uh, it actually only got six days just because of how January started. Um, so it's getting six days to work on. But as I said, at least five days will be focused on it and see how far I get. Um, my snowy owl is the challenge for my magical stitches. 
Uh, so 341 stitches I will do while stitching my lady and the tiger now in the beginning because I think I have until the 6th of January to get 341 stitches in on that one. Um, then I'm going to do my SK Butterfly Galore and I did join that for the 120 stitches challenge uh, for by the numbers so it means I need 2400 stitches in on that one but I might change that up now that I know I'm going to work on my lady and the tiger all of the month um, because uh, it's a little bit too much to get that amount of stitches in on another project when I have one I do daily and I also need to ask if I can do my lady and the tiger a second time for the last challenge so we'll see if I do SK butterflies galore if not I am thinking either epic Pokemon or Lion King or my no frogging cell if my um one of the ones I'm going to do for that one. It might actually be the no frogging cell because it has a lot of blocks of colors. Um, so I think it will go pretty fast when I just get it on a frame and stitch on it. After I am done with all the necessary stitches for by the number cell, the wedding sampler, um, I am going to have some days with just a little bit, <clears throat> two or three days on different projects. And one of them is the dragon coasters, because I want to get those finished. Um, three days of one of the Cinderella's and three days on the other of the Cinderella's. And I don't know if I'm And three days on my Legend of the Blue Sea. Because I also want to finish her since she was started before 2018. Um, and those whips are basically also a part of a challenge I am hosting over at the Frooks group. Uh, Frooks stands for... Fluffy Rainbow Unicorn Kawaii Stitchers. Uh, it's called Mountain Climbing. And what we basically do is we are as a group going to stitch our way to the top of Mount Everest. If you want to join that, please come and join. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support I am getting. Especially the support on the A to C Stitch With Me. Uh, I was really um, afraid and nervous about that series because I didn't know if people would like it. But so far there are a few people that have commented that they love the series. So I am really glad and I will then absolutely continue that series. So thank you so so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you at least for the end of January 